Good morning, students. I'm back. It is Thursday, so this is your Thursday video of your online school from home. And we're going to start with our reading today. So yesterday, we've already had two videos, so you need to go back and watch those if you have not done so. And I'm going to show you um, what we're going to be doing today for our schoolwork. First, we're going to go over our words in our Word Nerd book, so make sure that you have your interactive reading notebook, which is language arts reading has the tab and we're going to be writing our words in there so I'm going to show you the words we've written so far and we're going to talk about our word from yesterday and then get our new word for today so let me flip my phone our first word was segregation hold on oops sorry and segregation was the action or state of setting someone or something apart from other people or things and we talked about that and how um it meant to make someone feel bad because of the color of their skin or how they behaved or anything about how they looked. And that we talked about um, in our story yesterday, you probably read about Satchel Page, and we're gonna talk about some things that he had to deal with, um, with segregation. Our second word, sorry, my screen is doing some weird stuff. Okay, there we go is vendor that was our store our word from yesterday and if we look a vendor is a noun it is a person or company offering something for sale and my vendor or my vendor sentences the vendor had a variety of fruits and vegetables for sale on the oh sorry on the main street and my synonym was a merchandiser um you also could have picked a seller um, just the regular word merchant. Um, then my antonym was a purchaser because the opposite of selling something would obviously be um, to purchase it, to buy it, okay? So hope you got that right. And then our word for today is generations. And this picture's a hint as to what the word generations means, okay? I'm gonna go back real quick. Okay, yesterday we talked about our skill, which was sequential order. And we talked about that is how we put things in order when they happen in a story or in our writing. And we can use clue words like uh, first, second, third, next, last, finally, uh, then, or just different words that help us know that somebody is talking in sequential order. And then if there aren't any clue words, sometimes they will put um, things in order from a growth in someone's life, how they start young and then as they get older, or they might use dates and then we can summarize the order of events. So let me flip this back. Okay, so that's our skill for this week. And yesterday you were supposed to have um, done your baseball sequential order and we'll be talking about that in a minute. You should have finished reading Satchel Page. So I have a couple of questions for you to be thinking about, um, like the answers to these. So, um, I'm going to look at my book here, so I'll, um, not mess this up, <laughs> but, um, one of the things that they asked is the, the person who wrote this story, what was her purpose, like the author's purpose. And you know how we talk about pie, which is persuade, inform, or entertain. So what was the author's purpose in writing this particular story, which was a biography? I'll give you just a second. Okay. So that would be to inform because biographies are usually have facts in them about real people and a biography is a story written about a real person by someone else. An autobiography is a story written by the actual person about themselves. okay? So, but this was a biography and so the author's purpose for this was to inform us about Satchel Page. And then um, I want you to, you're a, I want you to do today like, the part of the story where there's Josh Gibson and him and they're having the contest um, to see who's better. Is Josh Gibson a better batter or is Satchel Page a better pitcher? So your um, assignment today on just a regular line piece of paper, one of the things I want you to do is write down in sequential order the events that happened between Josh Gibson and Satchel Page when they had their little contest to see who is better. Okay, so I want you to do that today. That's one of your assignments. And um, a couple of you 
got on your Google Classroom and did tell me some things about the segregation part of things that happen in the story. Um, uh, Noah told me that he never got to play Major League Baseball and that was because he was an African American. Um, Sylvia and Deacon and Noah all said that um, that he was not allowed to play and so did Fox. That it, they all said that it they were, he was not allowed to play baseball with white people. He could only play in the Negro Leagues. Um, they also said he wasn't allowed to stay in hotels or eat in certain restaurants because he was African American. So those are some things where people segregated because of his skin color and did not let him be a part of what they were doing. So that is what segregation looked like. So, um, if you did not do that, those are some hints and clues from your story from yesterday that you were supposed to have read your assignment on Google Classroom. So, one of your assignments for reading today is to take the part of the story about Satchel Paige competing against Josh Gibson to see who was better and put those events in sequential order. And you can number, you can even number it if you want to, or you can use your clue words to, to do that. You could say first, second, third, however many you want. Now, yesterday we did this part where we put the events from the whole story in sequential order. So that's what we did with our baseballs. Today you're going to be doing, let me scoot this back just a little bit, this part. And it says, notice I colored my baseball. And it says, the day I hit a home run out of the park. So what they're wanting for this little story here, and it's not very long, so yes, you have to write to the bottom of the page. You can write either a factual story, which would be a nonfiction story about a time you actually hit a home run out of the park, if you've ever played baseball or softball, and you can tell us your story, or if you have not ever done that and you don't play baseball or softball, you get to make up a fictional story about you hitting one out of the park, okay? So in your packet, this is your satchel page packet. You're gonna write your story to the bottom. Get your baseball color, cause it's on fire. Okay, so you're gonna do that. And you're going to write your um, sequential order for what happened between satchel page and Josh Gibson from your satchel page story. Okay, so that is your reading assignments for today. Now let me talk about our don't forget to do your word to your generations word in your word nerd notebook. Okay, so now let's do some social studies. So you should have, let me, I'm going to flip this. Hold on. Okay, so this is my interactive notebook. And if those, that's the Egyptian stuff. And if you didn't get that in there, we've already talked about that. Not a big deal. So I made me a page that says Native Americans because that's what we're talking about now. And then I went ahead and I did my notes about the Sioux tribe. So let's go over this real quick and let's read through this. It says, let me put, pull that up. The Sioux are a part of the Plains Indians located in the middle of the United States. The Plains had tall prairie grass. And so that is um, where Oklahoma is. It is in the Plains area. So they did travel through here. Number two, they are known for their teepees, buffalo hunts, feather headdresses, and counting coup. Sioux Indians also had horses that were used for hunting, traveling, and fighting, okay? And counting coup is where they would put feathers in those um, feather headdresses for um, hunting kills or kills that they had, and they would put those feathers, good deeds, things that they had in that um, feather bonnet is what it was called, feather headdress. All right, now we have our TP. There's our TP. And TP is a noun, and it's a tent made of animal skins upon wooden poles. Plains Indians used these as their homes. It took at least 18 bison hides to cover a 16-foot tall TP. Okay? So that's something that you can look at there. Yes, There's TP. If you would like to go to the cafeteria and eat breakfast at this time, Miss mm. Deborah in the cafeteria has said that you can get your So if you want to go eat breakfast, sorry, you can't unless you're here. <laughs> sorry about that. I was super loud, but it's okay. All right. So the other thing, the next thing is, a well, they were talking about the teepee. So Native Americans, we talked about how the Plains Indians and the Sioux is one of those tribes. They followed the buffalo. They had to have a way to take their 
homes with them and so that's why they lived in teepees because they could pull those behind their horses on travois and they could take those across the plains and follow the buffalo wherever they went because the buffalo was their main source of food and it did not just um they did not just use it for food they used every part of the buffalo and that is such an interesting part of their culture um they didn't waste anything so when they killed an animal they didn't kill it just to put a head on the wall. They killed it because it served a purpose for their life and they used every single part, the bones, the skin, the, the teeth, everything. And so um, that's a interesting part of their, their culture. All right, and then we had, sorry, I'll flip this back around. Parfletch, and it is a noun and it's a hide, especially a buffalo, especially a buffalo hide with hair removed dried by being stretched on a frame, made to be used like a bag or a large wallet. Okay, and then wasna, I hope I'm saying that right. Noun, food made by Plains Indians. It was made by drying out strips of bison meat and mixing it with fat and berries. So they would take the buffalo, and we say buffalo, it was really bison, and we're just used to saying that because that's what we call them, but it was bison. But anyway, they'd take the fat, and then they would find berries, and they would mix it with the the dried out meat, and then they would lay it out in these strips. And it was kind of like beef jerky, which is what we eat today, but it would be bison jerky. And I think you can even buy bison jerky and try that. I'm not sure, because I don't eat um, uh, anything beef, because I'm allergic. So I'm not sure, because I don't even look at that section at the store, because I can't have any. Okay, sorry, that was just extra. Um, anyway, so what we're gonna do today, so that were, those were your notes, and I'm gonna show you where those were to yesterday if you couldn't find them in your Google Classroom. You have to copy those in your interactive. This is not your reading one, okay? Your words go in your reading. This says what on the outside? Let me, oh my goodness. It says social studies, okay? So that means it's social studies, so it's not gonna go in your reading one. So we've got our notes. Well, today in your purple pocket, here, let me get it over here so you can see it. This, remember, this is the front, this is the back. Yesterday we put our stuff on there, there's my Indian name. In this purple pocket, there was a piece of brown construction paper, and the next thing you needed to find, I'm gonna show you, was the paper that had a buffalo or a bison on it, okay? Has the big buffalo bison, and let me turn it around. I colored mine, here's what mine looks like. And your job is to color your bison. You're gonna fold your brown piece of construction paper. And then on the top, you're gonna put this information. And it says, the buffalo is also called the American bison. A large male buffalo could be 12 feet, almost four meters long from head to tail and up to six feet, two meters tall. He could weigh as much as 2,000 pounds. At one time, millions of buffalo roamed the Great Plains of North America. A herd could be so large that it would take several days to pass by. Can you imagine that? Waiting for the buffalo to go by, and there's so many it took several days. I can't, I can't imagine that. That's just amazing. Native Americans used the buffalo for food, shelter, and clothing. All parts of the buffalo were used. Skin, hair, bones, horns, flesh, and tendons called sinew. Nothing was wasted, just what I told you earlier. Okay, so you're going to glue the buffalo to the top. And notice I had to glue it sideways because it's too big to glue the other way. So buffalo on the top, then it opens. Information about the buffalo at the top. And then down here, you're going to do this part that says bones and horns, hide and sinew. And I got to take that off there quick. Because <laughs> that's, you have to, to today categorize the parts of the animal. What did they use to from bones and horns to make things for the Native American tribe? And what did they use from hide and sinew to make for the Native American Sioux? So there's pictures of like a shield, a shirt, whistle, a scoop. There's different things. You have to cut the little pictures out and glue it on the side that you think it matches. Was um, a shield, was it made out of hide and sinew or was it made out of bones and horns? Okay, and you have to think. They stretch that stuff around it. Okay, what about a needle? Would a needle be made out of hide and sinew or bones and horns? And remember, bones and horns are gonna be things that are hard, hide and sinew. The hide could be, um, and the sinew both, when they dry out, they're much tougher and stronger, 
but they still are made of a softer material because a hide is the buffalo hide and the snoo is the little tendons that they would take out and dry out and use as their string there to sew things up and things, okay? So then you're gonna glue that into your interactive social studies notebook right next to your Sue notes. So remember these, you have to get these copied with your three pictures and this is on Google Classroom and then there's your buffalo with that. All right, so that's that part. Now I'm gonna show you a little, um, some pictures, cause I know some people, uh, especially, well, I need to see things, what it looks like when I'm talking about stuff. I don't like to just be told things without having anything to look at. So I'm gonna give you a couple pictures today. So let me get on my, back to um, my slides. Um, I have a little bit of pictures that I loaded for us. So we would have, oops, sorry, going back and forth between the computers, you know. Okay, here we go. So this is some Sioux Tribe pictures. Okay, let me flip this. Okay, so we've got the Sioux Tribe here, and then I want you to see how big these teepees really are. And the, he's standing up in front, and they're in the background. And that they're set up there, and there's one that someone has made in modern times so we could see what it looked like. And notice that it has the poles up at the top, so they would use these to drag. The buff, this is obviously made out of material from today, not actual buffalo hide or deer hides. But this this right here, um, they would take that part and roll it up like a blanket. But they are they are bigger than you think. You could sleep probably six people in them usually is about how many they would have. Okay, oops, sorry. Okay, and here are their beautiful feather headdresses. Look at how beautiful that is. And here's one over here, here's a family. And those are real pictures, aren't they? Aren't those good? And look at this jewelry they have on here, their bone collar. They were so talented in making things. And then this is a little short video I'm gonna show you about the buffalo, okay? And it, it's called More Than Just Food, Native American. It's gonna tell you a little bit about it. Here we go. Rain comes to the prairies, slaking the parched ground and creating a sea of grass. It's big, tall prairie grass they're eating. In the past, rain brought a time of plenty for the buffalo. tribes of Plains Indians that depended on the Notice they have birds. a wolf costume there were no on. Boundaries. Where the buffalo went, we went. And it provided for us uh, in, in so many ways. They were the main source of food. And then the hides were used for clothing, lodges. The bones were tools, weapons. We depended on this animal so much that it, it became a spiritual connection. There's something in your heart that tells you, this is our brother, this is our family. That sacred relationship was reinforced by dances and ceremonies. A painted buffalo skull carried prayers to draw the wandering herds close to the village and offer thanks for a successful hunt. But this sacred bond between Buffalo and the Indians, along with the world they shared, was under threat. Within a few decades, in the second half of the 19th century, the herds would be gone. William Hornaday documented Okay, so, oops, sorry. So that was a really cool video, and um, they were talking about how important the buffalo was to them, and that it gave them even a, like, a spiritual part that they knew that they were supposed to be one with the animal because they would use every part, and they were very thankful when they, um, they didn't kill more than they needed. So they used every part and um, didn't waste anything. So that was really a, a cool part. And then um, the buffalo herd almost became extinct, because white hunters came and killed all the animals and only took certain parts and then left the carcasses to rot 
on the um, plains. And so, um, luckily, up in Yellowstone, there were some le bison left up there, and that is where the herds are today. And we are lucky in Oklahoma because they used to come through here, like they were saying, days and days. There were so many. Now there are people that have actual bison and herds, and they uh, buffalo herds. They we have one on the way to Norman, and you can see them all the time. But there are a lot of people around the world that have. Those, that's not an animal that they have, and so it's very um, interesting to them to see one. So, and they're very majestic, big animals, and they're beautiful. All right, so enough of that, huh? Okay, so we've got um, our bison paper that you're supposed to do in your interactive social studies notebook. All right, now, some of you did your Google Classroom yesterday. I got a couple of um, Native American names, I need you to do that in Google Classroom on social studies for my class and in Mrs. Mays's um, language arts. Okay, so let's do our seminal words today. So let me f flip my phone. All right, so we have kazuppi, which means cold, chitto, which means snake, lani, which means green. Today we're going to do uji. Uji means corn. Owa means water. And Ifa means dog. So Kazapi means cold. Chitto means snake. Lani means green. Uji means corn. Owa means water. Ifa means dog. Okay, and you need to write those on this little paper and put it in your purple pocket. Okay, now, so let's go ahead and do our factor crud. Okay, so yesterday we had the jack face card in a traditional deck of cards was known as the John before 1866. Well, that would be crud. And it's crud because the card was actually before 1866 known as the knave, K-N-A-V-E. And I want you to see if you can figure out what the word knave means. But that's what the jack card used to be called before it was a jack, it was a knave. That's a Middle Ages term. Okay, now last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a little tiny bit. So let me put you up here in our nightmares book. So I don't know how far I'm gonna get, oh my goodness, my bookmark fell out. That's crazy, I'm not gonna know where I am. Uh, darn, where was I? Well, I may have to read tomorrow, sorry. I don't know where I am, I'm gonna have to, I picked my book up and the bookmark fell out. I have no idea what page I was on. Okay, well, yay. So anyway, <laughs> well, that's the end for today. So let's recap what you need to do real quick. Oh, I am going to show you Google Classroom. We'll do that instead. Um, so what we're going to do is you need to, for reading, if you haven't registered, you need to read that. You can't do all your things without reading Satchel Page. But if you're done with Satchel Page, then today's, you were supposed to do in your packet, the writing story about the day I hit a home run. You need to do your word generations. Then you need to do um, your sequential order of the contest between Satchel Page and Josh Gibson. For social studies, you need to write your new seminal words on your seminal page, that's your dictionary. You need to make your bison um, paper, put it next to your notes for the Sioux Indians in your interactive social studies notebook, and make sure that uh, you put what part of the buffalo made each piece and glue it on the right side, okay? I think that's all you had for today. Okay, and now we're going to talk about Google Classroom real quick. So I'm going to flip the phone because you have to do your Google Classroom and you have to come up here and get this stuff if you haven't got it. This is real school. We're having school. This is still school, so I need you to come do these things. Okay, and those of you that have, applaud, applaud, applaud. Good job. Okay, so I'm going to flip this so we can talk. Okay, so look, here is Mrs. May's class. So I'm going to click on this box right here. Yours may look a little different, but it's going to be... Okay, so look, here is... Let me get this into focus. Okay, look here. This said video for online school. This is how I know if you looked at online school yesterday or not because I put a video yesterday was Veterans Day. This paper is in your pocket. You were supposed to do something with this paper. 
If you did not get on Google Classroom and watch this video about what I want you to do, then you did not do your Veterans Day paper. If you did, applause, 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 like I said. This down here, so let me scroll down. So there's your video about your Veterans Day paper. Or that's the online school one. Here's the Veterans Day. It even says Veterans Day, okay? I put that on there in case I had someone that could make uh, YouTube work yesterday. So it's even on here if you need to watch it. Then here's my question I posted. This is the, it says, why did you choose, what did you choose as your new Native American name? And then you have to click it so you can see the whole thing. It says, what did you choose as your Native American name? Explain why you chose that name, okay? And then you have to put those, you have to answer that. And it shows me whether or not, look here, see this? It says, turned in. These two people have turned this in today. And then all these, then you can scroll down here and I can see all the people that it's assigned to that have not turned it in. And then see Mason did his yesterday. So I already have his on here. So I know who's turning things in and who isn't. And then I give your grade and I send it back to you so you know, and I talk to you even on there. I can text you kind of, that's what it's like, okay? So this is your video about Veterans Day. This is your question about social studies. Here is a picture of the notes that you can copy. And here is my question for Satchel Page. Okay, so you, like I said, you have to click that and then you can type in the box. And then it shows me how many are turned in. I've had one. Okay, and it says, how did Satchel Page experience segregation in your story? Please give me three examples. Okay, that's Mrs. Mays' class. Yours is all on this one right here, social studies and language arts. My class, here is what your social studies looks like. Okay, so when you click on that, it comes up with, what did you choose as your new Native American name? Why did you choose the name? Okay, and I've had four that have turned it in because I've graded four. So all the other people that haven't turned theirs in, it tells me that. Okay, and then, but that's your social studies. And then if you go back, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to click all the way out. Oh, sorry, <laughs> oops. Okay, got it, turn off. Okay, so there's also your video about Veterans Day that goes with this paper that's in your pocket. So you have to watch that to be able to do that assignment to know what it is. So there's your video about that. And there are your definitions with the picture. See if you click this picture, watch. Boom. There's all your notes you have to copy, and it shows you how to put the pictures on there with it. All done. So that's my class. That's social studies. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. It went all the way out. I'm sorry. But I want you to see all this because you need to. Okay, so Mrs. May's class, social studies and reading. My class, you have a social studies box. Then you have your language arts or reading. And see right here. There is your new question. It says new question. These down here, it has the date. These are old. This says November 11th. This is our new question. That's about Satchel Page, where you have to answer. Okay? All right. So maybe that helped you know where things are. So you have to do your work in your packets, and then you have to do your online work, which is going to be in Google Classroom. I'm not dropping any documents in there of things you have to write on, but there are gonna be videos, there's gonna be pictures to help you, and there's going to be questions. Now, there is nothing new in there today because I figured I'm gonna to try to do every other day so you can get caught up and make sure you have everything done. There's nothing in Google Classroom today, but if you didn't do yesterday's, so you still have to complete that, okay? So, like I said, if you are having problems, I had several parents contact me and I did the best I could to get them help. Um, if you need something, you need to, to contact me. You can talk to me on Google Classroom. You can email me. You can text me. Um, you can uh, talk to me on Remind 101 if your parents are a member of that. Um, so, just make sure that you're asking if you need help.
because I want to help you. I want you to be able to get your work done because we have to keep doing school. It's very important. We don't want to get behind because this will be two full weeks of school. So you got to do your work, okay? Um, I'm proud of all of you that got your stuff done. Um, get caught up if you didn't do it yesterday. Do it today. And um, you're going to do a great job. It's going to be fine. We're going to get through this. And I love you. And remember, kindness is a language. Oh, I almost forgot. I didn't give you your new factor crud. I know you'd be mad at me. Sorry. Okay. So your new factor crud is the average American woman owns 11 handbags. So do you think the average American woman, um, handbags are kind of like purses, you know. So uh, do you think she owns 11 of those, the average American woman? That'll be interesting to find out. Okay, I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. And yes, we will be doing schoolwork. So you need to make sure that you get back on here tomorrow. Watch the, the video. Go to Google Classroom. And I love you. And remember, kindness is a language everyone can hear. Have a great day. Bye.